Hello, parents. This is Anne Arundel County Public Schools, and you're listening to the Maryland Crabs Podcast. Live from a grungy kitchen table located in Annapolis, Maryland's scenic and historic capital, it's the Maryland Crabs Podcast. With each episode, your hosts, Tim Hamilton, John Fernay, and the occasional guest will dive in and pick apart the stuff that really matters most to you. We're too lazy to actually solve any of these problems, but we can definitely stir the pot. From schools, politics, parking in the fire lane, to those horrible people who drive BMWs. And here with this week's episode, live from the kitchen table... Tim Hamilton and John Frenet. Well, hey there, this is John Frenet with the Maryland Crabs, and welcome to your Thursday episode. Normally, Tim would be here, but he is either working with the flooded basement and redoing his flooded basement, or maybe trying to reconnect water to his house with a hose to his neighbor's house, or changing some electrical wires that corroded in his yard. I don't know, something, but Tim's life is falling apart, and he doesn't even have Twitter to deal with it. So I am flying solo this week, and we've got an episode actually that was recorded a little bit ago and a lot of people have asked us about where we record and a lot of our stuff is done on site with people and a lot of it is done in the commons which is at 209 west street which is just across from the lighthouse bistro and it is a shared workspace in the most basic sense but it's a really cool and a hip one and we really enjoy it there they've got a conference room they've got a living room they've got a refrigerator stocked full of beer they've got another refrigerator stocked full of people's personal beer which accidentally we took one Sunday and got in a little bit of trouble, but that's that. It's got a great view for a parade route. It's right there on West Street to see all the parades. So if you're looking to go um, see a parade and it's rainy, perfect spot to be. And it's really a great spot if you need a conference room or an office or just a place to get away. Very good, very affordable, conveniently located, lots of good places to eat and drink within easy walking distance. And we just wanted to talk with some of the people that were in there because there's a really kind of cool, eclectic mix of people that are in there. There. Anyhow, we spoke with Jeremy, who runs the whole show there. We spoke with Maka. We spoke with Jordan. And we also spoke with Darren. And it's a real eclectic group of people that are there. They all get along. It's They help each other. If you have a need, I suggest that you go check it out. And you can find out their information at thecommonsanapolis.com. And that's just spelled just the way it sounds. Um, but anyhow, let's get right into it. We're going to pay some bills first. And we're going to get right back into it with everybody at The Commons and see what it's all about. 35 years ago, Annapolis became a fine dining destination when Carroll's Creek Cafe first opened its doors on the Eastport waterfront. Today, diners enjoy delicious new American appetizers and entrees from sea and land, an extensive wine and craft beer selection, and creative desserts, all while enjoying the most scenic views in town. Join the fun as Carroll's Creek celebrates with a very special three-course, $35 anniversary dinner menu from October 15th to the 27th. Call 410-263-8102 to reserve your table today. Hey, we're here back at the Commons, and we do record an awful lot of our episodes here, and we've gotten a lot of uh, information or a lot of questions about you know, what, just what is the commons and, and what it's about. So I thought we'd bring in some guests and talk about uh, what the commons is basically in the most common definition. Common may not be the right word, but it's uh, <laughs> it's a cooperative workspace where you can uh, come in and work in a private office or in a just, just a desk for a couple hours or a desk for a couple months or all sorts of people that are here. And today we've got three. We've got from my left to right would be Darren Gilliam and we've got Jordan Crabtree and we've got Maka Olson. How are you guys today? Good. 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 All right. Well, let, let, let's just let's just do that. Darren, you I know you've been here from the beginning and you're the woman about town with Art Farm. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I don't know the address, but I'm going to say two to the left of 49 West. And, yeah. and yes. that, that, that would not necessarily it's be a horrible address. Yep, you're right. Um, <laughs> but what brought you here to the Commons? How did you get involved with this? Well, so a, a few years ago, I started with Symmetry Agency. So Symmetry Agency came together as it was a number of us that were contractors, freelancers, and we kind of wanted a crew. We wanted a crew to work with to bring in more work. So we created um, the, an agency for it, So, which is more of a collective, if you will. But so Symmetry Agency started. And when we first started, we were kind of bouncing around, right? We didn't have a home. We were kind of like, oh, well, let's meet at this coffee shop or let's meet at this person's office. And we were like, you know, there, there's enough of us. We're kind of like a little creative agency gang. We, we need to grow up. We need a, we need a clubhouse. You know what I'm saying? Our gang <laughs> needs a clubhouse. 
So we came across this space. So the first, which is, I think it's 203. Three. So we came across 203, worked out of here, had a shared desk in the middle, a private office up front, and there were five of us that were working out of here. So we did marketing, graphic design, videography, photography, website design, the whole nine. And this is all before the commons This existed. is be before the this commons existed. This is a symmetry existed. agency. And yep. when you say here, this is at 209 West Street, which is directly across the street from the Lighthouse Bistro. Mm -hmm. And it's the old livery building and up on the second floor yes. is where the, the facility is. Yeah. But And so you were wor working with an office up front and... All Office of the brains front, behind. Shared space in the, in the middle of the space, which is what it is now. So one of our, one of the girls who worked with us, she got kind of like a dream gig in Nashville and she left. And then we had one of our guys, he started like telecommuting. And so we were like, you know what? We need, we need more people here. It ended up just being Ben and I. Okay. For a while. And we're like, we need, we like each other, but we need more people here. Like, you know, what if we, what if we run it out a couple desks or something and it could be more of like a shared space experience. And then, you know, the people that we bring in to rent out desks to, we can actually use them as resources within symmetry. So I found out that Jordan was looking for a space, a desk. And I was like, yes, I love Jordan. He has great taste in music. Come along. He came in and the idea was that he was going to run out a desk. And then he brought in Jeremy to also run out a desk. And what happened one day was the two spaces beside us were empty. They had been empty for months. And uh, Ben and I had been quietly coveting those spaces. Okay. We were like, oh, man, wouldn't it be awesome if we could break down this wall and connect these spaces and create a shared workspace? And we spoke to Jeremy and Jordan about it one day and they were like, hold on, that's a great idea. And we've actually thought about that before in the past. And we're like, well, hot damn, we're going to do it. <laughs> so that's kind of how it's interesting. I always joke that in the livery, you know, most ideas start in um, random conversations or with whiskey. Right. Um, <laughs> this one may have been both. But... As most of them do. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of, that's how it started. So we we had the vision for what it could be and what it could look like. And we wanted it to be something like a style that had already existed in Annapolis, but wasn't present in Annapolis. Well, I mean, and you were, you were very artsy. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you're heavy into the art scene, but this is not necessarily all about the creative types either. No. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a place for, for everybody. I mean, uh, I, I felt bad. I drank, uh, I'm drawing blank on his name, but I drank his last beer. Um, one, one, <laughs> one, one, one Sunday, he was like, hey, that's mine. <laughs> I bought, bought him the six pack back, but it was, uh, he got it back with interest, but it was a little bit too late. I probably ruined his Sunday because he was wanting that beer. But um, this is a place for, you know, everybody. I mean, now, Jordan, where did, how did you, I mean, were you working at home? Were you working in another office or a corporate type of a thing? How did you come in to the, here, aside from Darren, Darren roping in and. Yeah, so. I, uh, I formed Lock Collective, like I'm a landscape architect, so I formed this Lock Collective as a landscape architecture studio and also some Where other... Where did you go to school? University of Maryland. Okay. Yeah. I, I, my, I had a roommate in college at Temple that was uh, landscape design and okay. landscape architecture out in Columbus now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I went to Maryland and then I worked in New York City in Santiago, Chile, and then worked for another studio here in Annapolis for like six years and then decided to start my own studio. And so I was working from home. And this is about two and a half years ago now and we had a we had a baby on the way we have we live in a historic home downtown and uh just knew that i needed to create some space as i was bringing in employees to get out of there and my wife knew darren really well too and so just texted and two days later i was renting a desk here and then but before that jeremy is a good friend another friend patrick mcnamara who rents out of here uh photographer videographer we were at galway having a drink and i had been having conversations with both of them about like it'd be great to have a co-work space in annapolis that was a little bit more of our style a little bit more kind of collaborative open not a not a traditional model of like separate offices but kind of really shared uh resources well the one thing is really neat about the comments i think is that I, and i've seen some of the the other ones i know there's one up by the former gold's gym and mm -hmm. whatnot and, it, and it's kind of like a cubicle farm yeah um and it's very sterile and everything else and this is very cool i mean there's hardwood floors there's i'm looking up at the ceiling probably 16 18 foot ceilings up on the second floor yeah. of this historic building uh it's wide open can be echoey and cavernous but there's uh opportunities to have a what they call i believe it's a hot desk where you can 
get a membership and you can come in for X number of hours a month. And if you just need to meet with somebody or your wife is driving you crazy (laughs) away, the cat is what, you know, whatever it may be, you can do that just for a couple hours a day or a month or whatever it is. Then they've also got a permanent I don't say communal desk, but a permanent desk in a communal area, which is your own little sort of cubicle, but it's not because it's really kind of woods, woodsy and very homey and you can decorate it the way you want. And then Jordan, you're in a um, private office, mm-hmm. one of the uh, suites. So you're like one of the one percenters here. At the- <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. And what's cool is how it worked. Like, so I came in renting from Dan- like Darren and Ben, you know, I was renting a desk mm-hmm. And was able to just kind of like leave my stuff here, which is the idea of like having one of those fixed desks. That you can kind of like leave your setup, come back and everything's ready to go. Um, and then as we built it out, actually Maka and Jeremy and I shared my office for like three or four months while everything else was getting built. And then I realized I had some employees come in and needed the whole thing. So I, I politely booted them out. <laughs> um, but what's great is like as my office continues to grow, I can continue to rent these kind of fixed desks. So I don't even have to, I don't have to find a new office space every time I take a new employee or even think out three years where say it's I something double, I never, triple never, the size. Never thought about. Yeah. It's like very expansive in that way. And, and hopefully I'll take over probably another fixed office eventually. But that idea that it can kind of like grow and ebb and flow. And if I have a consultant in for a couple months, they can take a full desk. That concept never as a growing business, you can take a permanent desk or an office. Mm-hmm. And as you bring on an employee, if it works, there's, there's a desk and ex- grow organically that's um yeah pretty fantastic and it's so flexible right it changes from month to month you don't have to sign like a one-year lease or right something. you know it depends right. on whether you're gonna have a summer intern mm-hmm. you know or Right. Um, well, well, Maka, this is Maka Olson down here to my far right, and she is uh, a nonprofit consultant. You are not a landscape architect. And you're not, uh, <laughs> not no. the owner, uh, co-owner of Art Farm, and uh, heavy into the arts district. So, what? And you are actually uh, the wife of a partner of the, the the thing. But what brought you here as far as your business goes? What? Sure. Why did you like? Yeah. So my company has an office in D.C., and I really didn't want to go in. Okay. Every say day. no more. We're done. You know? <laughs> we live. My husband and I. Live live in downtown Annapolis. So the idea of just being able to walk with him to work every morning just sounded amazing. And when uh, Jeremy started getting in these conversations with Jordan and with Darren and Ben, it was just like a dream come true because it was conversations we had had before also. So Um, yeah. And, and you've got one of the, I'll say the cubicle desks. I, I, that's a part of, there's gotta be a word, but one of yeah. the permanent desks yeah. that, that's your, your business out there, Jordan, you've got the, uh, the private office and you've got a client, if you've got a client that comes in, you've got, there's, there's meeting spaces here that you can do that. I mean, obviously you've got your private office and you can bring them in, close the door and, uh, or the employee from the desk and yell at them or do whatever you need to do. <laughs> but it's just much more than just the working spaces here. And sure. I know uh, yeah. out front there's the, it looks like a living room. And uh, I guess that, that's what they technically call it. But the couch and, and whatnot, you can sit there. Or you can, we're in a conference room right now. And all the amenities are right here. Do you find that it's, I mean, were you working at home? Were you doing telecommuting or were you going into right. D.C.? I was going to D.C. a few times a week and working from home, which is really yeah. isolating, right? You don't run into people spontaneously. And that's one of the things that I love. Is Hopefully like not. The- <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, one of the things that I love is just, um, you know, over the coffee machine, you run into someone who's doing su- super interesting work and something totally unrelated to the work you're doing um, right. and just get to have that spontaneity and serendipity. Um, and coming with the whole thing, you've got the you know, Wi-Fi is, is here. There's printers. Uh, I don't know whether fax machines are still a thing, but there might be one of those. I don't, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know if that, there's one here, but it, it's a great place for a meeting. And there's there's different events that have happened here. Um, I know that personally, when I come in here, I like to look and see the different art that's on the walls um, that that's changed up. I know there's been some art. I don't want to say openings because it's not a gallery per se, but they've got some rotating art that will come through here from local artists, which really makes it different. Now, do you find that the people here, even though they're in different companies and different businesses like that, I mean, and, and obviously, as Maka said, you've got the the water cooler talk and the coffee pot talk, but do, are you finding people work together? If, um, I mean, you're a little bit of a unique business being landscaped architecture, but no, I mean, would I be able to lean on you a little bit more? I mean, is, is it that type of a collaborative effort where 
you know, hey, you okay, I'm, I'm doing a graphic design on something like this. Hey, Jordan, can you take, what, what do you think on this? Yeah, I think that's exactly what it's been. It's So Patrick McNamara is here. So he does videography and drone work and photography for my projects and also some of our investment properties we have. So like him and I work together a good bit. Darren and Ben, um, they've helped me a lot on like the web design and the back end at times when I was getting a website going. There's financial advisors that come who are my personal financial advisors that rent desks here. So there really is a lot of crossover. And even in the fact of like, you know, as you're growing a business and say you're thinking about some HR system, you can just run around and ask and say, hey, has anyone figured this out before? <laughs> yeah. Has anyone looked into this payroll system? That definitely happens uh, a lot. Yeah. And so yeah. it's a lot of like shared Well, knowledge. even like right before this, you know. I came in to meet with Maka and Jeremy about Arts Week, Annapolis mm-hmm. Arts Week, which was founded and organized by Sym- the Symmetry Agency right. in partnership with Visit Annapolis. But, you know, I came in here to meet with them because of the nature of their business. So because, and I would have, they're in this shared space and we have created a relationship and them reaching out to me and saying, hey, we want to help you. We want to help give you some advice about how you can go about creating better opportunities or funding for arts week. And so it's been, and just like with Patrick too, I think Patrick is like the golden boy around (laughs) here because at symmetry, you know, we've also used him on projects as well. So it is a very collaborative. And I think that was, I remember when this all started and we were hanging out one night talking about it, like the commons and what it represents. And I remember um, Jeremy saying that he wanted it to be kind of like reminiscent of like a common green space, you know, of when people share, like, like, a, like grow together, like they have a community that grows, literally grows together from like the earth. In, in colonial in times, colonial time. the first things that would be built in a town would be the town commons and you'd bring your cow and they can graze on the same grass and, right. uh, you know, literally share the, 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 town comments as a resource i mean has it helped your businesses certainly as opposed to doing it in the spare doing a podcast in the spare bedroom of my house or on the the kitchen table (laughs) to be able to come into a conference room has been a um you know just a a big boon for me you know i mean you're you're darren you're very retail faced and sometimes i imagine you need to get away from you know you know it's 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 a good place there and um you know we're centrally located here for your business i'd imagine jordan yeah it's great for hosting like i mean obviously it's a great space for meetings and having clients in um i think it's just also like i think all of us would really value the kind of the emotional health that it creates having this like beautiful environment to work in Uh, i mean we are literally working with our friends um, but even as new people come in like those friendships kind of forming and having that place Um, like knowing i just got back i was away for a few days in nashville for a new project and that like my employees like not sitting here alone but has like other people around um, still kind of having that co-work co-workers feel even if the rest of us are gone from the office for a while right i think that's like incredibly valuable for a growing business and Mm -hmm. To not feel so alone and isolated and kind of forming a business in the early stages. That's a big thing, too, getting out. I mean, as Maka said, sitting at home alone all the time, it's, it is it is isolating. You know, here again, we're, we're all kind of different. We're kind of co-workers, but we're kind of not. I mean, we're obviously separate companies, which is so you, I think you eliminate a lot of some of the office sniping that you might get in a, <laughs> if you had an office of, you know, 30 right. people. No one's trying to get a promotion over anything. Right. <laughs> that's, 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 There's right. a lot right. of support. There's a guy in Jordan's office. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Moss on the wall. Yeah. yeah, I would say there's a lot of support, and it's interesting. Like, even for me, having a transition from working out of here full time to being invited to co own Art Farm and moving up the street, it was, you know, I, I get a lot of text messages, a lot of like, when are you going to come by? We miss you. But I also get a lot of visits and I also get a lot of love and a lot of, and one of Jordan's employees is actually about to show, show her work with us this winter. So there's so much support here. There's so much, even when people do step away for a little bit or whatever endeavor. And I think the one thing I loved about being here full time at the beginning was it was like, Hey, what are you working on this week? And just encouraging people being like, Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Or, and that's important, especially from people who typically work on their own or are freelancers, Mm -hmm. you know, when you're just sitting by yourself to have somebody give you that positive feedback, like, Hey, what you're doing is really badass. What you're doing is amazing. You know, just to hear that. Yeah. No, you're right. That is very cool. Just to have somebody check in on you and say, 
how are you? Well, what are you working on? But how are you? You know, that's, I think that's what's really nice about being in this space. Well, the nice thing also is that it's all local people, I think. The hot desks are designed to be transient to a degree, but there's people coming back time and time again to use them just for a little portion of the month or mm-hmm. a little portion of the day as opposed to all day. Um, and, and the local business, and as anybody knows, I'm all about starting business on Main Street, and it doesn't necessarily need to be Main. It could be West or Maryland or whatever it is. But tell us about 49, or 49 West. I know about 49 West. Tell, <laughs> tell, tell us about Art Farm and, and what you're all involved with right now, Darren. Um, so Art Farm so Art Farm has been existing for four years. Allison Harbaugh and Stacey Turner created Art Farm as a place where it was interesting because kind of like Jordan and Jeremy Ben and I, you know, the comments kind of exist, cre- was created out of our need, right? Um, and our desire to, to help other people who have the same need. Art Farm was created for the same th- reason. It was, they needed a teaching space and a space that they kind of wanted mm-hmm. to have like a creative clubhouse. Last year, Stacy Turner left to fulfill art full time, which she's doing a wonderful, wonderful job at. And they invited me in as the new space partner. Okay. And I was like, what? Yeah. Okay. That's a crazy decision. Well, you're a clothing designer as well. Yeah. So I do, I am, I went to school for graphic design um, and came out and uh, fell in love with street art and streetwear and um, just the art of making um, and the process. And when I joined Art Farm, uh, the first thing Allison said is that we, we want to expand this space. We want to create a retail front. And we want to properly represent. So in a way, Art Farm is kind of in the same spirit as the Commons that we have, we're kind of a collective where we have a lot of local makers and designers come together, sell their art, sell their wares, what they make, um, and we represent them. So we sell their stuff for them. Yeah. Very cool. Well, stopping at 45 West Street to see Art Farm and Darren. And You'll recognize Darren because she's this, got the stressed out look of a new mom. And a, and a lot of hair. And, 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 and a huge and, afro. And the, and the <laughs> and, and, exa- I look tired, but my hair is good. <laughs> and and that's, that's all that matters sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, George, what is, um, what, what is Lock Creative? Lock Collective. Collective. Yeah. So Lock Collective... All these C words, creative. I know, I know. Yeah. Um, So our ethos is we design minimal landscapes for connection to others in nature. And so we, you know, primarily landscape architecture studio. And our our heart and our passion in it is to create these spaces for people to um, go out into nature to experience, whether that be their home garden, whether it's a a city block of D.C. that they're, they're getting a chance to get some taste of nature, something that provides that connection point. And then also spaces that draw people out to be together with others. And again, that plays out in, you know, someone's residence garden where they just need a place to have a, a fire pit out in their garden to be together to the urban green roof somewhere that people can just come and host um, be with other people meet other people in more of a public engagement space do you mostly do private work or is it or i'll say residential work as opposed to commercial so we uh, we're about half and half so we do um, private residential so we do high-end residential work for gardens and estates um, and then we also do urban design so we'll we'll work at the scale of a half to full city block of dc doing uh, multi-unit facilities and that lands from you know we're designing the one project i think has twenty thousand square feet of green roofs and half of that that's occupied by people and what that looks like dealing with the water systems um, it also lends out to we do somewhere in between where right now we have a project in mississippi outside of oxford that's an 800 acre private development for 26 homes and very unique in these these modern homes each person gets 10 acres but then has about 600 acres communal shared and protected um so we're we're kind of a broad range and we have a we're working on just got back from an estate about 80 acres outside of nashville up in the country Um, so really kind of a broad range um, aesthetic lens to kind of minimal kind of making these minimal gestures into the landscape that draw people out into it that tends to be our aesthetic which lends to modern contemporary but also classical as well that's cool that's cool well if anybody is in need of landscape architecture and which is a a separate discipline than landscape design Mm -hmm. and i mean you work i'm presuming you work with landscape architects and you work with uh landscapers and um 
Yeah, so we'll, so ours kind of functions like an architect. So we'll do the design and consulting. Um, we'll manage the installation, but somebody else will be actually fulfilling that work. Do the execution, mm-hmm. yeah, plan so, selection. and Yeah, so we focus on the master planning, the design, and the, the oversight. Well, if anybody needs any of that, come on into the commons and see Jordan. He does not have the big hair. Uh, although his <laughs> hair does look good. But, <laughs> but yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll make sure that we get the links in the show notes and everything else on this. And down here, finally, again, over at the end, we've got Maka Olson. So what does your non, what type of sure, you know, yeah. what realm do you work in in the nonprofit world? I know it's huge. So I work for American Philanthropic, which is a for-profit company, and we work with nonprofit clients. So our mission is to help them achieve theirs uh, and make them just awesome and all the things that are sometimes hard for nonprofits to be able to do especially because a lot of them are understaffed and sure. just running a nonprofit can be very difficult so we help them mostly with fundraising with strategic plans branding communication all kinds of stuff so our kind of vision is that we want to strengthen civil society and that nonprofits do the really good work in communities and neighborhoods we want to help them become well, more effective. I, I know one of the things I was involved with at Great Give several years ago when the uh, Community Foundation did this 24-hour period where everyone was like, give, 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 give to all of these other small nonprofits. And the problem that they found, and I wouldn't say it's a problem, but is that there's so many wonderful nonprofits doing so many wonderful things, but they're so stretched, so mm-hmm. thin, mm-hmm. and they may not have the expertise to figure out how the heck to do fundraising exactly and that was a real boost to them and it was sort of a disappointment when they pulled back from it but that's something that and we've got tons of great small profits in town i mean i think of we care and friends from larry griffin i mean uh, there's seeds for success there's they've actually got it down right now um uh, the spca obviously knows what they're doing and, and as does the hospital and everything else but there's tons of these small ones that are doing such great work that you are off the radar. And is that somebody that would be, you would help you work with mostly absolutely. smaller ones? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of our clients are smaller ones. And precisely the way we can help them is that if you don't have the budget to hire a full-time fundraiser or a full-time director of development, we come in and help our clients with um, with a sort of basket of hours a month, you know, where we're able to help them fulfill some of those needs. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, there's quite a difference in range in businesses that are here. Uh, there are several more, and Jordan's pointing at me. He's got something to say. Yeah. <laughs> I, was gonna, <laughs> I was just going to plug for the commons in general and kind of one of the things that I've used it for a ton. Um, so I know in my company, obviously, I have my meetings here, and a lot of people come in and out. We've hosted kind of renting from the commons, and Jeremy, for uh, like we had my son's dedication here, having like 50 people in the space for five hours on a Sunday. We've hosted, um, we had a speaker come not too long ago. We kind of did a, using this space and even the space downstairs um, with the the light box with Heather Crowder and kind of sharing that out and kind of some flexibility that bounces back and forth. I know we've had, we've got a ton of happy hours that happen impromptu or, or plan where we kind of bring a lot of people in, but that's one of the beautiful things I've had friends who are, you know, not even working here, but they know the space exists. So they've contacted whenever They had a corporate merger going on and they needed a conference room to kind of meet on the East Coast. So they came and hosted that here. And there's just tons of flexibility of renting a conference room, renting the whole space, renting an evening, a weekend, whatever's needed. I came in one Sunday, I think, for something, and there was a yoga class going on. Yeah. <laughs> and a friend was like, walked in the door, I was like, <laughs> you, know, you look back, make sure you went open the right door. So it's... Uh, it's uh, it it is quite a collaboration, quite a mix mash of people, and I do encourage people to come, you know, check it out. Is it two hundred nine West Street, and they're in Suite two hundred three, I think. Two hundred one. Two hundred one. Yep. Um, second floor. I mean, second yeah. floor. It's it's easy once you come up the steps. Again, right across the street from the Lighthouse Bistro, and I think that uh, if you work at home, if you are a remote employee, if you're growing, if you're working in your garage, and you need to take the next step out or maybe you need to continue to tinker in your garage and just get the accounting end of this or the 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 back end of the business out of it definitely a very cool vibe here in the heart of downtown annapolis it's you know very convenient i mean we're steps away stumbling steps away from metropolitan and lemongrass 
uh, sailor across the street. My favorite drink in Unofficial spot. meeting place. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have never been there. I don't do, oh, see, no. I don't do seafood. Although, you still although got they've got a hell of a bologna sandwich. Yes. Uh, they do. The bologna and, sandwich. And the merchant. <laughs> bologna sandwich and the merchant marine is a yeah, narrow amen. one. Amen. And the what? Merchant marine. Merchant marine. Yeah. The drinks alone. Okay. The, the cocktails alone. Uh, people. So good. Yeah. Get your life together and go to Sailor. I, <laughs> I'm taking you there. I, I, like, 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 like I say, I, ha, I have not. I, I, I've never been to um, O'Leary's either. Another you know, one. I've never been to O'Leary's. Over, over in Classic. Eastport. Yeah. Yeah. And again, oh, yeah. it's, it's just it's great. It's yeah. just not. I don't do yeah. seafood, so it's just oh, not on my radar. Yeah. 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 Cantler's? I nope. I have. <laughs> You've been to Keeler? No. Well, I guess it makes sense. But although, yeah. although, I will say Mike's Crab House in Riva Love has it. some of the most outstanding pizza. They have, <laughs> Go figure. They have great burgers, too. Yeah. They have great burgers. So, yeah. yeah. There, who, okay, who's the best burger in town? <laughs> best burger. Best burger in town. Putting you all on the spot. Try 85. Ooh. Okay. I might have to second. I would say Dry 85 and Tsunami. Tsunami has a... Oh, see, you guys are going for all the yuppie bars, man. I'm going with the ebb tide. <laughs> That's not funny. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, the ebb, Grumps, has, Grumps has a good burger, yeah. too. Grumps has a good... Uh, Grumps does uh, a, a lot of things. Very but, Smokehouse, too. Yeah. Yeah, Smokehouse. Yeah. No, but you're, 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 you're okay on Try 85. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah, get, I'll give you credit. That's up in there. That's they, <laughs> they went on a lot of things. They have great fries, great drinks. Oh, fries. Yeah. Yeah. And... Fox's Den. I like how this is totally turned into like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I miss I miss the old one. What? Uh, yeah. Fox's me too. Tavern. Sly Fox. Sly oh, Fox. Sly Fox. Yeah. I know. Me too. Yeah. I do uh, too. That was a loss. It's. Uh, I know. I mean, seventeen forty-seven is great, but it's. Uh, it's but Sly it, Fox was yeah. It was kind of neat. Well, thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with Jeremy Olson and talk about some of the nuts and bolts about how you can I don't know join. The cult here at, uh, <laughs> at the Commons. Well, thank you. Thanks. When you think of Watermark, you probably think of Harbor Queen. You know, the big white boat that sits down at the end of City Dock. But did you know that Harbor Queen is much more than just a visitor attraction? That thousands of local school children take field trips aboard it every year to learn about the Chesapeake Bay and our region's history. But that's not all you don't know about Watermark. When the Susquehanna River crested, washing thousands of tons of debris into our waterways, Watermark was there, rolling up their sleeves, helping the Annapolis Harbor Master clean up Ego Alley. And when the Annapolis Police Department SWAT team needed a boat to conduct special training exercises on to help protect our waters, they called Watermark. Watermark, making our mark. To learn more about how Watermark is here for our hometown, visit watermarkjourney.com. And finally, we're here joined by Jeremy Olson, who is one of the founders of The Commons. How are you? Doing great. Good. Thanks for yeah, having me. You're holding down the fort while we're in here talking with everybody. <laughs> so we are, we're recording this again at The Commons as we do a lot of our podcasts and in the conference room, which is wonderful. How I discovered this was, um, you know, through... Ben Eisenberg, who was with Symmetry Agency. Right. And he said, hey, come check out this space uh, as a new business opening up. And I came in sure. here and I was yeah. like, holy shit, this is like really cool. <laughs> uh, and I had mentioned to the other guys, I said that it's it's not a unique concept. I mean, there's Gold's Gym up the road has yeah, a, yeah. a similar thing, but it's very sterile. It's a cubicle farm. And, sure. you know, you've got the hone desks and, you know, right. it's just all standard things. So right. how, how did this come about? Yeah, I mean, I think you touched on it pretty well. Like the, the commons really is, it's part of a larger movement in workplace, um, thinking about how we work and how do we incorporate a, a work culture that is more remote than it ever has been, has more freelancers than it ever has, and um, has more startups and entrepreneurs who are sort of rootless. Um, so what we really have done is, is tried to say, look, we want to be a hub for those people who are civically focused about Annapolis and be the place for them to be able to come gather and, and work together and, you know, not lose out on some of those things that I'm, I'm sure the other guys have talked about, but community and sharing ideas and relationships and those things that are really important to our work life that you don't easily get when you're working at home. 
Right. Well, I, I will say, I mean, you, you say centric to Annapolis a little bit. And this is, a lot of people think when you think of Annapolis, you think of downtown. Sure. City Dock is the center of Annapolis. But yeah. as, as I sit up here on the second floor and think about it, if I wanted to go to lunch or something, I could be downtown at Market House in probably about a 10-minute walk, maybe. Totally. I could grab the free shuttle out front. I could be 10 minutes. I could be at the right. Navy Stadium. Yeah, uh, on a walk. So we're right here across from the Lighthouse Bistro, Rubens. Uh, I don't know what they're called, but right up Rubens Restaurant. Rubens Restaurant, right up on the corner. Four dollar breakfast sandwiches. Oh, you love that place. You, you can't beat it. Uh, is <laughs> you know you can spit on that. There's a Seven Eleven, I think, that's in between there. That's or, right, two blocks away. Uh, some kind of a thing. You've got Sailor. You've got. The new uh, Hilton Garden Inn across the street. That's the right. Lowe's is right down the road. Sorry, the, the Annapolis Hotel, soon to be the Graduate Hotel. <laughs> no longer the Lowe's, but that's you yeah, know a totally. block down the road. Lemongrass, Tsuna- not Tsunami, Lemongrass and uh, Metropolitan are... Sailor. S- yep, sp- yep, all spitting distance. Uh, and then, of course, you can get right down into the West Street, and you've got the Ramps Head and, and 49 West and sure. everything down on Main Street. So it's, it is really very, very convenient. Sure. If you need to park here, there's a garage... I wouldn't say literally behind it, but the uh, night and garage right behind Lemongrass is uh, right there and dirt cheap as far as parking. If you are a resident of the city, you can use your coupons and use them to get out of jail there as well. Man, you don't even need me here. You sell this better than I do. So, yeah. <laughs> um, well, and, and, and also street parking is not really bad down here. It's not as yeah. bad as it is. So you can you can go around if you want to go yeah. off the block and figure out how to do it. But um, no, we but, love our location. Um, and, you know, Scott, who started Sailor across the street, you know, he helped me build our bar shelves. And we've had artists from uh, Fin Art, which is right at Caddy Corner to us, have donated us some art here in the conference room. And so we, um, we're really proud of our neighborhood being here in the Arts District. We, we just love this part of town and the way it's changed over the last, you know, 10 years to be what it is. And, and we are going to be here for the long haul. When did he get born? The Commons? Yeah. When was that? So the idea really came over time, I would say about a year and a half ago. So Ben Eisenberg, who you mentioned, my other partner, Tony Richards, who deserve a lot of credit for this place. And the three of us were all looking for office space and we were thinking we might just lease an office together. Um, But then we started meeting guys like Jordan and Darren and Maka, you know, people who all had this idea of having a kind of collaborative workspace and the commons really just grew very organically out of that idea. Um, and we opened our doors in June last year. Talk to me about the, the three different models that you have within here. Sure. I, 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 I know I don't do it justice when I say it's like, <laughs> just like a, you know, a, sure. a, a cubicle or, right. and whatnot, but what, what are the three different models? Sure. And, and is it a membership? Is it a client? Is it a right. cult? Is it, you know, I mean, <laughs> uh, it can feel cultish at yeah. times. Um, no, we have, so we have three uh, kind of tiers. So um, the uh, kind of most committed tier, we, we, we want to have the ability to be beneficial to many groups of people. So kind of at the most committed, you can rent an office from us. And those are uh, really, you know, those are pretty full right now. But then you can also come and just rent a desk. It's your desk. We call those designated desk memberships. Um, and those run for 350 a month and you can really treat the commons like your own. You can lock stuff up, you can put stuff on our walls, show your branding, really, you know, participate in the community every day. And then we also have a tier called what we call hot desks. And, and those are just tiers essentially, um, allowing you to treat the space like a coffee shop that's slightly quieter, um, and gives you free coffee. So you can come in on 20 bucks a day work out of the commons, um, get to know the community, drink our coffee, um, share in the kind of amenities of the, of the common spaces and unlimited um, coffee, 20 bucks a day. Totally. Yeah. Hmm. So, um, Does you that know, include the scotch. <laughs> That's that's a that's a secret membership tier that you know. We... <laughs> <laughs> I know I, I reiterated earlier the funny thing, and I'm I'm drawing a blank on who who's got the first desk out here. Um, we, oh Patrick. Or... Yeah, 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 Patrick yeah, yeah. down in the corner. We were here recording a podcast on a Saturday, right? And um, there was some Killians in the refrigerator so we thought it was like up for grabs so we took it and he's, he went to get it he's like you guys just drank my last beer <laughs> i felt, felt horrible we ended up bringing i brought him another six pack and, and apologized well, profusely. That was, but that was, was nice of you um, um but <laughs> the the neat thing and, and we briefly touched on it with the other guys is that some of the non-work stuff that goes on here totally 
I, I, I mentioned that I like to come in and I'm not here every day. I'm here frequently enough, but I love to see the change of artwork on the walls. Right. Um, I, I love to see what's, you know, every now and then there'll be boxes piled up on the table because there's sure. something new coming in or doing. Sure. What all What all is happens here besides... Sure. That and, and, and yoga on Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so we, I mean, we have a pretty eclectic and diverse kind of uh, slate of events that happens periodically here at the Commons. So, you know, one night we uh, put a sheet up on one of the walls and late at night watch The Godfather all together on a projector. Um, every About every four months we do a, what we call an art talk at the Commons and, and have a different local artist come out and display their work and kind of get to tell us why they do what they do and what has inspired them. Um, and that's open to the public and open to all the commons members. So, you know, look for those in the future. Um, all the way to, like you mentioned, we have a, um, we have a Buddhist monk who studied at St. John's who does a meditation course. Of course he studied at St. John's. Right. <laughs> where, where else would he have studied? Right, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Johnny and that makes total sense to me that that would, <laughs> that would come from there. So we, you know, we have a great group of things that we, we do together just to kind of build community outside of work. That's really core to why we started the place, um, that it would be more than just a place, that it would also be a, a network and a community of people who are thinking about this town together right now how are you are you are you full up now or what do you have vacancies or? um we have a few vacancies um we've got a you know we've got one designated desk that anybody can come in and rent and we always have plenty of capacity for people to come in and as a hot desk member we also rent out our conference room um if people are looking for a meeting space in town or or want to um, you know, do a webinar or no, is that, just, that you'd rent that out to the public if it's we available. Do. Yeah. So we just rent it out for 20 bucks an hour. We, we make it really easy and flexible for people. Um, anybody can come in and rent it. And, and it's kind of cool. It's got, I'm looking over my shoulder. It's got a big, huge, big screen TV. It's got a giant whiteboard, a table with like eight chairs. And yeah. If I was motivated enough, I could put my USB <laughs> key in there and put my logo on. Right. And take fancy pictures totally. over the, uh, um, over the podcast with our logo on it. Totally. But, um, You've been here so long, you might as well, you know, put your branding up somewhere in this conference room. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got the, uh, the, and what is that room outside of the conference room? The great room or the... Yeah, yeah. We call it just the common area. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a big room. We've had lectures there. We've had um, training seminars where companies have come out and rented the space out on a night or a weekend. Um, we've had all kinds of events out of there and, and we can really serve a sort of a wide array of, of events in that space. And again, it's got a, a large television there so a large totally. monitor so if you wanted to present something yeah um you've got that and then out front Absolutely. are the couches yeah that's and right the, and the chalkboard and right and whatnot and that's uh just sort of like is that the it's like a living room to me it's, totally that would, and that would be a good place to you know maybe say goodbye to a client if you've met with them sit down or if you just need to meet somebody if that's dropping something off or that's right just a real quick type thing not a bad place to watch a parade if the weather's shitty uh, <laughs> did you do that before <laughs> uh, maybe <laughs> maybe do you have access to the roof yet man i wish that would be sweet we need to we need to talk to the landlord there, about there, that. There, there's a cocktail party waiting to happen. Oh man, yeah. I've always wondered why Annapolis didn't have more rooftop bars. I always thought that was a good idea that somebody needs to run with. Because we're Annapolis. So you you this is your job. You work here and you you work to market this. You work to uh, you're always the sure. smiling face when everybody comes in the front door. Sure, that's right. Very high tech here. I know the. Um, you've got some people depending on what level you have. You've got the access to be able to you know, push a button on your right. smartphone and the door will magically open, like right. get smart. But what has surprised you since you've started this that you didn't know? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, I was, I mean, a lot of things, man. Um, I, you know, when we started it, we were obviously, there wasn't another co work space like this in Annapolis and we really had no idea how it was going to be received, whether there was even going to be a sort of a, a group of people that saw the vision to come out and actually use the space. Um, so, I mean, the biggest thing I've been surprised by is from the moment we opened our doors, you know, we've done kind of grassroots marketing things and, you know, we've been having the Maryland po Crabs podcast out of here, but we haven't, you know, really had to work that hard to find people who, who got the vision and knew how to use a co-work space and wanted to be a part of that. Um, so that was, honestly, that was very surprising to me. I mean, I, I always hoped that was the case, but 
Well, and it's, it's it's a huge concept nationwide. I mean, and totally. it's not, uh, and you're not the first to do this. I mean, we right. obviously I, I mentioned the the sterile rent a condo sure. office type thing that sure. here, but this is a lot more than that. And I, I think the big ones are like what we work. We work's kind of the archetype. Yeah. So um, they they are only a ten ten or so year old company that is went from nothing to. I think they're worth 10 billion plus right now. Um, so okay, and you went from nothing to 100 million. So okay, we're. <laughs> <laughs> but, <wish>. Yeah, <laughs> but but I mean, this is a, this is a concept that as technology is allowing more people to work uh, from home remotely, just still amazed that I can do 90 percent of my work in the palm of my hand, totally on the side of a road, totally. Um, and the need for a traditional office is not what it was sure um, and certainly it has its place for you know larger companies and everything else but for smaller companies you downsizing is right. still an issue people are still getting laid off right. people are you know technology i mean mcdonald's just swapped sure. out all of their uh, most of their employees for kiosks they right. cut 30 percent out of their staff in some of the stores those people are doing something else now they may be working from home they may get an idea that grows and this is a, a logical step totally yeah you know 90 percent of the work um that every essentially every job in America, you know, ninety percent of the tech you need to do your job, you can get from your home office. Um, so why not do that? Well, I th- I think what we would say is you miss out on um, the water cooler talk, um, the sharing of ideas, cross pollinating of ideas, the growing creatively by having a sort of community around you. Um, and so that's that's really the the place that we want to step into and say, look, like, be a freelancer, be an entrepreneur, be a startup, be really creative, have your freedom, but also don't miss out on the things that made the old I think, office I think that's great. really important, too. I mean, if I'm yeah. coming up with a logo and I've got three things and, you know, my cat thinks it's the first one and my <laughs> dog thinks it's, you know, it, it, it'd be kind of nice to be able yeah. to take, um, and, and to be honest with you, it's not necessarily somebody that may be in the the logo or the creative design sure. just hey you mr landscape designer or mr uh, landscape architect sure. what you know jordan what one pops out for you right boom it's that one hey i can go to maca over in nonprofit, you know management and say what what pops out and and, and totally. get that feedback which is really kind of neat how do we learn more about the commons what's sure uh, obviously we can stroll down to 209 west street sure uh easiest ways are our website the commons um, or you can, you know, if you ever want to come see the, the space, do a tour. We give those all the time. Um, the best way to reach out to me is info at thecommonsannapolis.com. And we, you know, we give tours every day, Monday to Friday. Um, we'd love to host anybody, give you some free coffee and show you the place. I'm still stuck on that free coffee or not free <laughs> coffee, $20 unlimited coffee. It's ceremony coffee too. It's, it's the Ooh. best. It's the yeah, good stuff. Yeah, that's brewed right down the street. This isn't a watered down McDonald's coffee. There you go. <laughs> Take that, Starbucks. Hey, Jeremy, thank you very much. And um, I do encourage everybody, we love it here. We love um, popping into the conference room and doing podcasts here. We uh, The people here are great. I have, I happen to have a plan where I've got access to 24 7, so it's very convenient to me, but certainly coming in during the day. I mean, if you work at home and you've got the say, okay, well, on Wednesday, I'm getting out of home. This is a perfect thing uh, sure. to be able to do that. If you're hopping from coffee shop to coffee shop, getting maybe dirty looks or Absolutely. or, or yeah. whatnot, this is a good place. Uh, if Jeremy's not looking at the front desk, there is a stocked bar to the right of him. Okay, <laughs> And sometimes you can sneak in there and get a... You're the one who's been sneaking the liquor. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna we're 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 just gonna end this right here on that note. I know I I, I know nothing about stealing your booze, but uh, do check out the Commons here, two hundred nine West Street, and it's thecommonsannapolis dot com. A really cool space. It's um, in the old Livery Building. It's eighteen. I don't know my history. It's nineteen oh seven. Okay. Yeah. So um, was, yeah, I mean it's a, it's old cool building with a whole history. I could tell you about it on and, another uh, day. You've got the light box down, Heather Crowder's light box down on the first floor along with an architect. Him and Wilson's down there. Yep. And um, up here, we've got the commons and a couple other people. And then the third floor has a couple more people as well. So Yeah, there's a lawyer up there. And, oh, no, uh, really? Mortgages we don't like lawyers. Boring stuff. Yeah. We're the, we're the coolest ones, I think. The, the cool, Heather the Crowder's cool. cool the cool folks hang out on the <laughs> second floor. All right. Come check out the commons. Thanks. <laughs> and there you go. 
If you have a need for an office or a conference room or to get out of the home office or get out of the office office, go check them out. It's inexpensive. It's convenient. It may be just the ticket. If you do have any questions for us, if you have any suggestions, if you do have any comments or criticisms, please send us an email at info at themarylandcrabs.com or you can find us on Twitter at mdcrabspodcast. Facebook, of course, at the Maryland Crabs Podcast. And make sure that you're subscribing to us and also the Daily News Brief for Ion Annapolis. But anywhere you get your podcast, you can subscribe and it will get delivered to you automatically. You don't even need to think about it. You're just going to look down at your phone and it's going to say, hey, there's a new Maryland Crabs episode. Push play and then you're right there for you. Real easy to do. And if you get onto one of those sites where you can give us a rating, do give us a rating. And if you've got a few minutes, give us a review. We do read them. We try to improve. And if you ever wanted to leave us a message, now this is just a one-way incoming line, give us a call at 443-266-3600. And if you wanted to leave a guest editorial for the Daily News Brief, you could do that. If you wanted to leave a rant or a rave for us to possibly play on the Maryland Crabs, do that as well. Suggestions, criticisms, we'll take it all. 443-266-3600. But just be warned, we're not going to answer that. It's just sort of an answering machine that will pick it up. Anyhow, that is about it. For the week. Next week, we've got an episode coming up with County Executive Candidate Stuart Pittman. This has been the Maryland Crabs Podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now, get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously, go! You're still here? It's over. Go home.